Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sade if you're new here, thank you for joining. Today I'm going to be turning our second bedroom into a fully functioning office and I want to take you on that journey with me, so let's go. This is a load of junk that was underneath the bed. So I'm gonna sort through it now and get rid of stuff that I don't need to keep, which I think is probably everything. I'm gonna to put together that sofa, put it over there, put the dressing table under here, just so that I can kind of get a feel for the room. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going and I need to see stuff in place before I start ordering furniture that's far too big or far too small. Before any room transformation, I like to clear up the space that I'm working in just to get a feel for the room and work logically in terms of measurements of pieces of furniture that I'm gonna buy. There's nothing more that I hate than returning furniture because I didn't measure up properly. So that is what I'm doing here. I get a lot of questions as to how I come up with creative ideas that are functional as well as looking beautiful. And to be honest, sometimes it is a bit of a struggle, but I take a lot of my inspiration from magazines. Readly is a digital subscription service for magazines. Think Spotify, but for magazines and newspapers. It's paper free and environmentally friendly. You can read everything on the cloud or download your favorite magazines and read them offline too. Readly gives you unlimited access to over 5,000 national and international high quality titles, both current and old editions, and there is something for everyone. I particularly love Readly for all of the home interior magazines. I draw so much inspiration from these and I've definitely implemented a lot of design styles from these magazines. I'm guessing the reason you're watching this video is because you like interior design and decorating, so I would highly suggest Readly as an app for you if you'd like to get that extra inspiration. Readly are giving you one month subscription free and thereafter it's $7.99 per month once the one month has ended, though this can be cancelled at any time. If you would like to take advantage of that offer, I'm going to leave a link at the top of the description box of this video and you can use that to get signed up. Remember, you don't have to have all the answers at the beginning of your makeover, you can still draw inspiration as you go throughout, so thank you Thank you to Readly for providing ideas and inspiration to me throughout my makeover process. So this mirror that I want is the Hovet by Ikea. It's £90 and it measures 78 by 196, so it's pretty big. This is a new build house, so the ceilings aren't super tall. I think they're like 224 or something ceiling height. It's pretty much going to take up the entire length of that wall, which is fantastic, it's literally what I want. I'm really happy with that. The only problem is um, it's £90, which is steel for a mirror, but it's obviously like two metres long. So I don't have a big car nor a van. So I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. Delivery is like 40 quid as well. I'm not sure I want to pay half of the cost of the mirror for a delivery, but we'll think about it. We'll figure something out. We always do. Just sharing some wisdom with you that was imparted on me recently. If you want to buy something from Ikea, but the delivery price is too much for you, if you can drive to a near Ikea store, a near Ikea store near you, and pick it up, pay for it, and take it to the delivery point in store, it will actually slash the price of the delivery pretty much in half, which was amazing for me, so I felt much better about buying that mirror. Here I'm just taking off the wallpaper. Make sure you soak it well, and it'll come off in strips rather than tiny little bits. I'll link this nifty little device down below for you. This is a laser measurer and it's perfect because it actually keeps a history setting on there for you. And it's perfect if you do DIY projects alone. So I'll link that down below for you. Five hours later. Okay, good morning. I'm sorry I wasn't able to film a lot yesterday. I kind of just got in the zone. Also ran out of battery and daylight as well. So it would have been really terrible quality and I don't want to do that to you guys. The coven, the majority of the coven is up. I've left this little section here because I am going to do this with you. But before we get to that, I am going to show you exactly how I did this because it was kind of a struggle. Excuse the appearance. It was a late night. I ended up buying this stuff. This is the Pro Cove Light. So this is super, super light. I got it in 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters because my ceilings aren't very high. If you've got higher ceilings, I would go with the bigger coving, which I think is typically 127 or 128 millimeters. It is really easy to put up once you get the hang of things. I initially was using this blue tool. This was for 90 millimeter coving, so it didn't fit my coving. It was cutting it wrong, which is a given. This is very mixed reviews. I ended up giving up on that after like two cuts because I didn't want to waste the coving. In order to do this, I'm I'm gonna show you how I cut it on the mitre saw in a second. A few points that I wanna to touch on. These are internal corners. These are external corners. Internal corners, internal corner being something like this. 
so the two walls meet at an internal angle. There is this section which sits flush against the wall or ceiling and this section. You'll notice that this one is thicker than this one. This is the part that I put against the ceiling. So the coving essentially sits like this. You need to make sure that it is always this way round else your coving will not match up if you put it the other way around. Logic was just that there's more surface area to put an adhesive on so that it grips onto the ceiling more. So you see this is an internal corner, this is an external corner. So again, the thicker part goes at the top, cuts look slightly different. So this is how you will know if this is an external cut versus an internal cut. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain this as best as I can, but it is a little bit confusing. In order to make the external cut for this side so um, just to show you that the bit that sits on the ceiling actually goes on the base that is how you cut this so you turn it upside down you put the ceiling part to the base and you cut it down that way so when you turn it around this is actually how it all fits so you need to make sure that you're keeping that in in mind when you're making your cuts if you want to cut this angle here you need to position your your mitre saw to the 45 degrees this way and then cut it down this way. This will also make a cut for an internal coving. So you need to make sure when you're doing your internal coving cuts, the rest of the coving goes up that way and you're cutting from this side of the blade. Now, if you wanted to swap things over, of course, you move your mitre saw around and that is going to actually make the other cuts for you. So it's gonna do it this way around. Now, it will take a few tries. You're not gonna get this first time. Just take a piece of coving to practice figured it all out. I'm gonna show you how to adhere it now, it's super simple. To adhere the coving to the ceiling, I used No More Nails. This was okay because this is a lightweight coving. If you were using Jiprock, you are going to need to use a proper adhesive because that stuff is heavy. I wanted this room to feel really sophisticated even as an office and one way that I like to do that in a room is to install panelling. I measured 90 centimetres as the height for my chair rail and I know traditionally it's a little bit lower than that but because I had a sofa and a desk in the room I wanted to make sure the panelling peeked through and was on show. Before adhering the chair rail to this particular wall, we measured where the mirror was going to be hung. Because the mirror was going to sit flush against the wall, we needed to make sure that the chair rail wasn't going to interfere and that we cut that down to size to almost make it bespoke. We also used the yellow grip it fixings. These are perfect because they hold a weight of 70 kilograms in a hollow wall, so they're perfect for plasterboards in new build houses. Currently laserine level here. This is so simple, literally just gonna turn the tripod and watch that laser just go around the whole rest of the room. Absolutely the best tool ever. You can swipe up, swipe up. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it in the description box for you guys as well. I said this on my Instagram stories the other day, but this tool, the sliding mitre saw from Works, is fast becoming my best friend and my favorite tool when it comes to woodworking. You can just tell how in awe of my dancing skills Rob is. <laughs> but in all honesty, I just wanted to say that having someone on a project like this to help really, really is a benefit. So you don't have to struggle and do everything on your own if you don't have to. Having Rob as an A-star assistant really helped to speed up the process. And everything is all right. I like how you're doing all right. To save yourself the hassle of this part, you can just measure your chair rail to meet your windowsill or your window trim. We don't have a window trim and I wanted my chair rail to be a little bit higher. So we went in with this, which is an external cut, a tiny little bit, and you slide it in to make it look like a more professional finish and as though it was intentionally meant to be like that. Okay, so Dado is up on the entire room. By the way, guys, it's like five o'clock now and obviously daylight savings, the sun has gone down. However, we have dropped from the Dado rail 10 centimeters, i.e. around four inches to start the molding process. So the molding is gonna sit in squares inside here. The sides where it meets the wall, the Dado, the skirting and in between other moldings is gonna be four inches the entire way. So basically we're literally just gonna measure out four inches 
and then um, that will determine the size of the boxes all the boxes in the room are going to be different sizes which is unfortunate but that's just how it goes so that's going to be a square this is going to be like a funny little square blah 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 i hope that makes sense for the purposes of this video, the terms chair rail and dado rail are interchangeable, but they are actually different in actual fact. I am measuring four inches, i.e. 10 centimeters from the baseboard, from the chair rail, from the sides, just to create that square box to then put in the molding with confidence. And I'm cutting all of the molding at a 45 degree angle so that they sit in a perfect square. Just a side note that you don't need a fancy mitre saw to do these cuts, you can in fact get a £5 mitre box from your local hardware store and it will give you the exact same cut, it's just a little bit more time consuming. Girl I see your face everywhere, when I'm going out you'll be there Throughout the process of installing coving and panelling and such, I always use a damp cloth to wipe away any excess adhesive, filler, caulk, just to give a cleaner finish and it reduces the need for sanding. Morning guys, it is 10 o'clock, I'm up, a bit tired but I'm up and um, I need to go around and wood fill all of the holes where we put the brad nails in and the gaps between the wood as well. I've got a lot of holes to fill on the walls as well from previous mirrors and shelves and stuff. I ended up using this Ron Seal wood filler. It's my first ever time using it and I really, really liked it. It does give the illusion of just wood once it's been sanded down and dried after a couple of hours. You don't have to use a fancy tool like I'm using to spread it. I just didn't want to damage my nails, but make sure any pins that you have are tucked away nicely so that you can properly fill the hole. When you say you want me for life, was it all a lie? I gave my all to deserve ya, begging on my knees just to show ya, you're the one I want and I love ya, no, no. Woodfield, all of the holes in here, so you actually won't be able to see any of the holes, which is fantastic. I would for it. I really, really like it. I primed it all using, I think I've thrown the tub away now, but I used the Dulux primer. I also went around with some white emulsion that our builders left us about two years ago. I'm surprised it's not gone off, um, but I went around all of the coving, so you'll see that all of that has kind of been, been touched up now. It looks really bright and white, which I love. I'm gonna give this a second coat on the coving, then I'm gonna move on to painting the bottom half from the dado rail downwards, the chair rail downwards. And then once that's dry, we can go in with the top half. These are the colors that we're using. So the bottom half is gonna be a bright white and the top half is gonna be this gorgeous sage color. I cannot wait to get that sage on the wall. Anyway, let's do it. Guys, how professional am I? Have you seen this? Oh, you're a bit seamed out. <laughs> Hello, I'm here for your decorating services. What would you like done? You know what this means? Time to paint, baby. I mean, I've been painting, but it's time to really paint, baby. Woohoo! I'm trying a new paint company and by the end of the video you will know that I really really liked how the colour combination worked. This is by a young company called Lick. I really really like their concept and I really love the colours and the quality of the paint was tremendous. I have used the white shade here is white 01 and then I go in with a sage green shade which is the shade green 01 from the company. I also really like the way that this company gives you samples of paint so they do it on a sticky back paper which you can peel off and stick around your room or different areas of the house to really get a feel for the paint. This might be right. Either you feel it or you don't might give it a try. Yeah. Our bodies collide. Baby, you're this office makeover whooped my butt. I was on a deadline to get it finished. I was sleep deprived and to be honest, dancing makes me happy. It keeps me motivated and it just gives me that extra bit of oomph I need to carry on with everything. So I just wanted to let you know, be happy, have fun with it. It's not all gonna be smiles and laughter. You are gonna feel a little bit delirious at times and it's okay to take a break, but you will get there. It's really nice to know at the other side of the makeover is a beautiful room. Hello, my loves. I've just been to the shops, I went to Next. Ow! For God's sake. And I picked up this pendant light. This is very similar to one in my 
dining room. This is what it looks like. I think this is gonna be perfect for this room. It's just that touch of modern that it needs, else it would be too traditional. I've totally lost the footage of me installing this ceiling medallion, but I will leave an article below on how to install one. It's super simple. Ready, three, that's two. <laughs> three, two, one. We've got this lamp from Danelm. It is a bonnet lamp. I wanted one in gold. However, they come up for like a hundred pounds. I saw this one and I was like, we can spray that. So I'm literally gonna get a plastic bag, tuck the wire into the plastic bag and just use some masking tape to seal off the plug bit. And then I'm gonna spray the rest of it gold. Well, that has turned out absolutely amazing. Look at the shine on that. We've got this mirror, right? The mirror in it is gorgeous. It's actually shaped to fit this. So I'm gonna keep the mirror to the side, but I wanna use this as my vision board because we've already got a mirror in that room. So I'm gonna take it apart and spray it black. Ew. There are some spiders in this house. Have you seen this, the webs on this? Ooh, scary. I'm gonna clean it all out, take the mirror out. Then we're gonna put the cork board in. This frame was absolutely filthy. I actually have no idea what the person who had it before me did with it. So it needed a thorough clean. I went in with multiple layers of sugar soap, warm soapy water, a lot of tea towels and cloths and yeah, just got all of that dirt off of it. And then I went in with some black spray paint by Rust-Oleum and let it dry for a couple of days. It is the final day, finally, of this project. I'm so happy, partly because this makeover has kicked my butt but also because it means i get a fully functioning office just like i can just finally work and just like the rest of the house is gonna be tidy and stuff so i'm just very very excited for that but anyway you will see behind me a plethora of photo frames this is craft paper you don't have to use craft paper i'm using it because it's recyclable i have it and it's just something laying around the house and um, i would go for some old wrapping paper that you have lying around or anything that you deem is like recyclable i'm gonna use the craft paper as a kind of like guide it's much easier to put a piece of craft paper on the wall with some sticky tape and mark an x where the hanging piece is and then you can literally drill or nail or screw straight into into that piece of craft paper put it on the wall nail right through or screw right through the paper and tear the paper off and then you just have to hang your um, picture up but what I'm gonna do is or what you should do is do this for every single frame I've got quite a lot and I don't want to waste that much paper so I'm gonna do like a couple of the bigger ones and then fit all the other ones around them just by eye but you could totally just do that with all of your frames put it across the whole entire wall and you will see exactly what the gallery wall looks like and you will be able to move things and make it perfect because I know that's really difficult make sure you reuse this sort of paper I'm gonna keep this because I'm wrapping presents in a week or so so that will do for a little present It is pretty much complete. I can't wait to show you. Um, ignore my gallery wall. There are a couple of pictures that I need to go and get for it, but um, you get the gist of it. But the sofa's done. The upcycle DIY things that I was doing are done. So I can't wait to share it with you guys. But yeah, here we go. I'm gonna turn you around in three, two, one.
is everything that I pictured and more. I seriously, seriously love it. It's practical, it's aesthetically pleasing, it's got so much room still. I was worried about filling it up with too much stuff, but I feel like I've used the height of the room well and um, with the storage and the inspiration board and all of that stuff. I'm so happy to have somewhere to sit and actually physically do my work and I've got my vision board so that I can get loads of inspiration I can continue to print pictures and then think of DIYs for you guys I've got the huge mirror there's loads of floor space that I can get on and do crafty bits and oh, I'm just so happy I'm so so happy so so happy so guys I finally showed you the office makeover I'm going to go through and do an office tour in a couple of videos I'm going to make sure I film that this week and get that um, done for you so that you know why I chose certain things why I went for certain colours and just so you get to know a little bit more about the office I guess because I'm always nosy like that I like to know stuff like that as well so I thought I'd share that with you guys just wanted to say thank you so much for watching if you did get to the end I really appreciate it and I really hope that you liked this video before you leave please do if you would like to subscribe to my channel I I do lots of makeovers, DIY stuff, crafty bits. Like this video, leave me a comment, let me know what you liked or what you would do differently. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye. Mwah.